scissors and card. And uh, the details of these are all explained in the introductory tutorial. So there are three kinds of parallel fold. The first and possibly the most important is the parallelogram. The parallelogram is a funny one. When you open the base flat, the parallelogram goes flat. It's only in dimension when the base that it's on is, is not flat. The other two are the symmetric parallel fold, so the, the lengths on each side of the pop-up are exactly the same, and the asymmetric parallel fold, where the two lengths on the pop-up are different. So these last two we'll be doing in part two of parallel folds. This, this tutorial is completely devoted to the parallelogram. Parallelograms can be used quite nicely in combination. So here's an example. Um, you can use them this way with the base as a the base card as a base and a background, in which case this has created a whole series of planes and you can stick bigger pieces of card onto any of those, either vertical or horizontal. So you can play with it that way. You can also play with it this way. So yeah, lots of potential there. So first I'd just like to show some examples of these. So this is Jan Piankowski's Haunted House. On the first page we have this staircase. This is actually two parallelograms. This is the first one built into the gully created by the book. This is the second one built into the gully created by the first parallelogram. And when the page goes flat, the whole pop-up goes flat. The second one, this is a symmetric parallel fold. So this fridge here, the two sides on each side, they're both the same. So when the page is flat, the pop-up stands up. This is the third one. This is one of the other uses of the parallelogram, is it? It creates, uh, you can use it to, to make moving arms move and we'll be looking at that later in this tutorial. The next page, well, this is, a, this is a curved shape that we'll look at in a much later tutorial. But down here, the bath, that is, a, that is a parallelogram. You can look at it straight on. As the page goes flat, the bath goes flat. So that's Haunted House. The other one I'd like to show you is uh, Sarge in Charge. This is Sarge in Charge, illustrated by Bill Bolton. And if we look at this one... This is a parallelogram being used to turn over these figures. So these are all slotted on, but the basic strip that they're all attached to, that is a parallelogram. When the page is flat, the parallelogram is flat. But it, it gives a really nice action to all those uh, soldier ants or whatever they are. So now I'll show you how to make a parallelogram. Usually, parallelograms are used, they're used like this, so we get a base sheet, fold it in half, fold it really thoroughly, take a piece of card to, to build with, we'll use um, pink, so here's a pink piece. Just cut off a, a strip from one end. Doesn't matter how wide. And then we need to actually make it slightly shorter. So maybe cut off a, an inch or something. And in this case, fold a, a gluing tab onto each end. So here it is. Gluing tabs should be roughly one centimeter wide or half an inch. Um, unless you want them to be showing, in which case you can make them much bigger. So here it is. And then you fold the crease, not in the middle, that would be, that would give you a, a symmetric parallel fold. In this case, because it's a parallelogram, just make the, make the crease, say, a third of the way along or a quarter of the way along. So you've got two different lengths. So this time... Put the central crease onto your onto your central. Put the crease on the pop up onto your central gully of the base. Mark where the where the crease lies. Either end, it doesn't matter. Flip it round. This is the important thing with these. You flip it round so that the long side is over the short piece on the base, 
and the short side is over the long one. And then you can, because the parallelogram lies flat, when the whole, whole base is flat, you can actually glue both ends at the same time. So just put a bit of glue on there. And the, the tabs can actually point in or out. It, it really doesn't matter. If you want them, it's where the crease lies that's important. You have the, the, the tab in, it's hidden from view when you open it, or you can have it out as part of the design. So there it is. As the, as the page closes, the parallelogram closes. And it's a good, good idea to really give it a good squash afterwards, just in case your, your measuring or gluing is a bit off. So here it is, and you can use it this way, or you can use it this way, or you can use it this way. So I'll just show you a couple of examples where it, books are made using parallelograms with the base as a base and the background. So the first one I'd like to show you is um, Kubasta, Puss in Boots. And the last spread is this fantastic fairy tale coach made completely out of parallelograms. If you turn it, turn it and look at it end on, you'll see that it's all parallelograms as you close it, so the parallelograms close down. The other one I'd like to show you is this one, uh, Don't Go Out Tonight by Babette Cole. And in this one, every spread in this book is the same, the same type of design. As you pull down the base, so the pop-up appears. And if you look at these from end on, or sideways on, you'll see that the whole, the whole thing is a series of parallelograms. As you open and close it, the parallelograms become 3D. Okay, now I'd like to show you how to build with parallelograms onto a V-fold. So here's a V-fold made in one of the V-fold tutorials. And we're going to build a parallelogram. There's gullies to build into. There's a gully here and on both sides where the, where the V-fold is attached to the page. There's also a gully in the middle, in the middle of the V-fold. Again, you can see the gully closes as the V-fold closes. So we'll just take a couple of pieces of, we'll take this card, take a couple of slices off it. So you take the strip of card, start by making a fold on each end, crease the folds thoroughly, and the, these two folds, one on each end, these are the two gluing tabs, and the, the folds are both parallel. And then you make another fold roughly a third of the way in. It really doesn't matter, it depends what type of, what type of shape you're wanting to create. But I'll go for roughly a third of the way along. So that's a third parallel crease. Crease it really well. And then I'll just trim off these corners. It's not, not mechanically necessary, but it, I think it stops, them, stops the jagged bits snagging on things. It seems to just glue slightly better. And so now you have a choice. You can either put the, the parallel, can, Parallelogram can either be built onto the pop-up like this in a long, long and low parallelogram, or it can be built onto it like this, so it's a, a tall parallelogram. By luck, I've got it more or less the same height as the as the V-fold. So we're going to build a tall parallelogram. So we start by putting the the crease of the, the central crease of the parallelogram into the gully. Mark where the where the crease lies. It's always the crease that you measure to on pop-ups. So we mark where the crease lies. And then the crucial bit, we flip it over. So you're going to glue the long side to the mark. You've, you've measured the short side and you actually glue the long side. So we put, put glue on that tab, smear it right to the, right to the crease and, and glue the crease to the mark. Now, you put the whole parallelogram into its closed position. 
So the parallelogram's in its closed position. Put glue on the other tab. And then you can just close the base and it finds its natural sticking position. So there we go, we've got a parallelogram rising from the page. Now we build another one into this, this gully here. So I'll take another piece of card. Might as well, I'll just straighten this up slightly and maybe make it slightly shorter. Okay, we put a tab on each end, just like the other one. And then a, a, another one somewhere not in the middle, again, maybe a third of the way along. Cut off the tabs as the, the corners as usual. And again, I'll, I'll glue that into this. This is going into this gully. So put the. Oh, I've done it again. I've just, by luck, I've just got it to the right length there. If any longer, and it wouldn't work. So I put this crease into the central gully and mark where the fold lies. So there's the fold, the crease line. And now again, the crucial bit, you flip it round. So I've measured the short length, flip it round. I'm gonna stick the long length onto that mark. So I put glue on the, glue on that tab on the long side. And glue it to the Glue it to the mark. There we go. And this, this could be high up on the V-fold or low down on the V-fold, doesn't matter. And now you fold the whole piece into its closed position. Put glue on the other tab. Smear it to the crease. Then you shut the whole, shut the whole base and the, the tab will find its natural sticking position. Okay, I'd just like to explain the, the lengths involved in this. So every pop-up spans a gully. So in this case, this, this parallelogram is spanning this gully. And so every pop-up must be balanced on each side of the gully. So in this case, it's this length, this length from the gully on the base to where the long side sticks down. This length is the same as this length. And on the, on the long side, this length, the height between where the pop-up, the um, parallelogram is stuck to the V-fold, this height is the same as this height. And so that's what's giving you that's what's giving you balance. When the whole thing is closed, you see from the gully on the V fold, you've got the height of the V fold plus the short bit of the parallelogram, and then you've got a short bit of base and the long bit of the parallelogram. And if you look at this other one, it's the same. This this short distance on the V fold is the same as this short distance on the parallelogram. And this long distance on the V fold is the same as the long distance on the parallelogram. So that's how you get balance with these parallelogram shapes. Um, I can actually show you this as well on the, on the earlier parallelogram model. I'll just point it out. This, this short side on the parallelogram is the same as the short side on the base. And the long side on the parallelogram is the same as the long side on the base. So on the left hand side, you've got a short length plus a long one. On the right hand side, you've got a long length plus a short one, so the two sides balance. Okay, I'll just show you the V-fold in conjunction with the parallelogram. This book is Jungle Days by Helen Barmer, and she's done a very imaginative use of the V-fold here. So 
this V fold, rather than it rising up from the base, this is coming forward from the base. So the surface of the water is made with a V fold. And in this case, all the other creatures, the ducks, the kids, the dog, they're all based on parallelograms lifted by the V fold. So if we look at it end on here, you can see there's, there's parallelograms raised, raised by the V fold, raised by the gully here where the V fold joins the page. And it's, it's the same on the other side. Here we've got the dog and the, and the kids. These are parallelograms attached to the V fold. So as the base closes, as the, para, as the V fold goes down, so the parallelograms close down. The other use of the parallelogram is for moving arms. So I'll just show you a, a quick way of doing that. In actual fact, moving arms is a highly complex aspect of pop-up and there will be a whole tutorial on moving arms alone, but it, it's an important use of the parallelogram. So I'll just show you a, a quick, basic way of doing it. So here's the, here's the base sheet and then we need a, a piece to pop up from it. So here's a piece. We just cut a, a chunk off the end. And we'll just make that slightly shorter. Put a tab on each end. These are parallel folds. So a tab on each end and um, trim off the corners. And in, in this case, there'll be a third fold, but this this third fold, keep it, keep it quite near the end. So maybe, you know, one inch, two centimeters, something like that. So we make that third parallel fold, fold it really, really well. And now you take this, you fold it shut. So this is, this is fold closed and you just fold down the top corner. So you're folding this top edge close the close the parallelogram you fold down this top edge to come down against the the crease so you've got that that little corner folded over and this is actually a counterfold so you can push that in and close it down so there you are you've got the you've got the counterfold now you put that this is going to glue onto the bottom of your page so put the line up this this um, middle crease of the of the pop-up piece mark where the crease at the the short end lies on the page so you you just mark where that crease lies now crucial with parallelograms you flip it over so you're now going to stick the you're going to stick the long end to that mark make sure the make sure this double triangle is up and you, because it's a parallelogram, it goes flat when the base is flat, so you can put glue on both ends at the same time. Smear the glue up to the crease. And you can glue that, glue that down. So you, you measure the short distance, but you're gluing the long side to, to the mark and you can glue the other end at the same time with the whole piece flat. So here it is, the whole piece is flat. As you, as you close the page, just make sure it all, all works nicely. And now you, you can push that, that counter fold in and fold it shut. Right, now you can attach, I've made this ever so slightly rough actually. Now you can take a, a piece to use as a moving arm. We'll cut this slightly, slightly narrower. This is gonna stick onto the small, the triangle on the small side. So we'll just cut that corner off and stick this onto that onto that triangle. So this sticks down there. 
and as the as the base closes I'm not sure yeah that's fine as the base closes the the arm moves down and you can actually enhance the visual effect if you if you put a um, elbow in the arm so if we stick an extra piece on there you'll get an impression of even more movement so glue that on there and now you've got the you've got the, the moving arm and there's a very good example in the uh, haunted house that I showed you earlier here's the haunted house and it was on the third page here it is it's the parallelogram opening and the gorilla moves and it's actually really interesting if you look at these moving arms you've got the the triangle that's on the short side of the parallelogram and you've got the triangle on the long side this arm attached to the short side as the page closes it rotates against the page this arm attached to the long side of the parallelogram as the page closes it flips over so this is this is quite important about moving arms moving arms are a very sophisticated mechanism there's a lot more to it you need to watch the um, moving arm tutorial which comes later it's all in my book pop-up design and paper mechanics and it explains parallelograms and moving arms in great detail